Hi Great Dramas and welcome to another uh, whiskey review with myself, Greg Dillon of GreatDrams.com. Today I'm going to be having a look at the three components of the new range uh, to come from IDL or Irish Distillers as they're affectionately known and legally owned. Um, and it's from their Method and Madness range. Now Method and Madness comes from or inspired by supposedly the Shakespearean quote, though this be madness, yet there is method in it. And realistically, when you get down to the, the nuts and bolts of the brand um, that they have created with this range, it's about mixing kind of established tradition, uh, process knowledge and all of that kind of stuff from Billy Layton, uh, Brian Nation and uh, Gerf, their, uh, their, their head Cooper. Um, and then also matching all of that and that immense decades worth of, uh, like several decades worth of knowledge and uh, distilling history with questions and challenges from their respective apprentices who have been working at the micro distillery down in uh, Cork at the Middleton site um, to kind of create new weird and wonderful things, try different woods, uh, see what effects there are on different um, uh, spirit they put in there for maturation and what the flavour profiles can be. And they openly said in a panel discussion at the launch um, that you know there have been some that haven't worked and they've had to dump it, get rid of the stock. But then there have been loads that have worked. And we've got three here uh, that we'll have a quick look at today. And there'll be many more uh, being released under this brand as well. So it's definitely one to look out for. Personally, I absolutely love what they've done with the brand work. If you take a look at any of these, you've got um, just stunning artwork going around it, lovely colours. All of this representing what the, the kind of flavour profile or the experience uh, in an abstract way. Method of Madness going down the middle. This one's French chestnut uh, finish to the actual whiskey itself. And yeah, very, very good. And all are bottled at 46%, uh, apart from the one which we'll give a nod to in absentia, the 31 year old uh, single cask, single grain, uh, of which I managed to uh, ask Billy Layton at the launch if I could keep one of the stoppers and he gratefully, uh, or kind of gleefully even, obliged. Um, it's a nice stopper actually. Good metal coin in the middle, symbol, uh, symbolising the age and uh, yeah, nicely done. Um, so getting into the, the main range, or the main current range, uh, we're going to go with starting off the single grain Irish whiskey matured in bourbon barrels and finished in virgin Spanish oak casks. Um, we're working from samples here today. Uh, very lucky and very fortunate to have been invited to uh, the launch over in Dublin a few weeks ago, uh, which was phenomenal. Um, and got to try this with the production guys and the legends that are uh, Gurr, Billy and Brian. Um, and, and amongst the, genuinely amongst the nicest people in the whiskey industry. Um, as are everyone at IDL really. Uh, but these guys are the face of production. Absolutely superb, really nice people. So, going in, on the nose you've got actually quite a, what is this, from the Spanish oak casks, uh, virgin Spanish oaks, you're getting a really heavy blast of, of the wood, like pencil shavings or wood shavings uh, jumping out there. Remember, cast your mind back to when you are at school, potentially, and when you used to uh, shave, uh, do the pencil uh, sharpening of like an HB pencil or whatever they used to force us to use back then. Um, and when you got that just subtle, subtle smell coming off the sharpener, then also the pencil as you continue to write or draw or whatever. Um, that's the kind of note I'm getting here. Really nice actually. Really, really nice. That mixed with a kind of moist uh, oak note that's un underneath that. But an inherent sweetness. But for me, this one's all about the oak, really up front, and a lot more nose than you'd expect from a single grain whiskey, actually. Um, and yeah, very impressive. Normally, they're really soft, really calm, really gentle. As they go into, majority of it goes into blends and to kind of build up the body with the grain and then layer on the malts on top. And, uh, and Billy would work his wizardry to bring all these uh, disparate strands of flavour profiles together. Um, but in this case, it is very much a nose to spend time with. Let's go in for a taste. Mm. 
very sweet. Those kind of wood shavings come back and kind of get you on the tongue. Uh, huge influence from that virgin oak, more than I would have ma imagined actually after, I think if memory serves, a 12 month uh, finishing cycle in the, um, in the virgin oak. Really nice, very soft, gentle, sweet, but then a pang of that oak. Very good. Hmm. And a subtle, very slight um, honeyed finish actually on the second sip. Really adds to it and unexpected. Secondly, I'm going to have a very cheeky look at this one. It's got everyone excited at the launch. Single malt Irish whiskey, 14 years old, with, an, uh, with a 12 month finish in French Limousin oak casks. And they refer to it on label as enhanced with French Limousin oak casks. Fair play, I'll be the judge of that. So, here it is, pre-poured as always. Oh, hello, hello. Oh, wow, a nose full of fresh apples, maybe a few pears in there, a definitely fresh green apples, like a really fre uh, fleshy, juicy, uh, stunning apples as if they've just fallen from the tree. An underlying sweetness as you'd expect. Vanilla notes are in there as well, subtle, subtle char but nothing Nothing uh, really jumping out hugely in that. Oh wow. Like the, uh, as you spend more more time with it, you kind of get, I mean, from the fruit, uh, the fleshy, fresh fruit move through into uh, the kind of taste or nose you'd get from a, um, your, your mother's apple crumble um, before putting it in the oven. So before the, uh, all the uh, juices and the fruits are broken down and interweaved with that, uh, the sugar, the actual, uh, you know, the, the component parts of an apple crumble, of which I've managed to forget. Very nice. Pears come through stronger and stronger the more you nose it. Right, let's have a go. Soft, juicy pears definitely coming through a lot, a lot stronger now, uh, and the apples dissipating somewhat. A little sweetness there, a bit more vanilla, a bit more rounded, really well balanced. Ooh, that's a very, very nice whiskey. And on the finish, that sweetness, kind of a medium length finish. Um, you know, it's not staying there for ages. Um, but yeah, definitely got interesting uh, woody notes as well, uh, hitting more on the back of the tongue and now lingering in the finish. Um, a very interesting experiment actually. I've never tried an Irish whiskey like it. Um, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Now, Finally, for this video, uh, we're going to have a look at Method of Madness, single pot still Irish whiskey matured in sherry and American barrels, but then finished again for about 12 months in French chestnut, um, which as far as I'm aware is a first for the Irish whiskey industry, and they're allowed to do this because they haven't got the same uh, uber strict laws that the SWA, the Scotch Whiskey Association, does with regards to the innovation and the different types of wood that can be used within Scotch whisky uh, around the world you don't have as stringent uh, innovation um, rules as you probably see from uh, compass box transparency and drive for innovation in some of their earlier products um, and so you know Irish really ha do have or Irish whisky really does have a, uh, a good opportunity to stand out and, and kind of play with different innovations uh, that Scotch doesn't have so it's lovely to see um, this method of madness range exploring that and seeing what can be done with different woods. So on the nose here a lot deeper, a lot deeper, a lot thicker, 
Oh, nice. There is a sweetness, definitely. But the nose is, so, so it's a very interesting hybrid actually. The bourbon uh, cast kind of vanilla, oak and, and kind of light char you'd expect. And also the deep dark fruits from, uh, from the sherry cast that would have been used. And then the limousine oak has definitely given it a bit of a pump. So taking those kind of classic bourbon and sherry notes and just elevated them uh, to a different place. Uh, again, not, not, not something I've experienced in Irish whiskey before. Those woods, um, not so much the pencil shavings as before, but a subtle like wood chips this time. More just uh, chipped woods, um, uh, like you get say on a, uh, a wet winter's day um, on one of the um, those oak chips that you put on the pathways or on, um, on flower beds and all of that kind of stuff. Very nice. On the palette, that different, uh, kind of, uh, not previously used oak uh, flavour profiles coming through again. Really juicy. Oh, lots of deep, dark um, uh, kind of, uh, stewing fruits, Christmassy fruits, Christmas cake, those kind of things. Mm. And it's something that is just, it's actually really hard to describe but an elevated version of something you expect. And that's what I think the, um, the French chestnut has given here. It's something a bit different, a really interesting sweetness and nutty quality uh, around the back of the palate, back of the tongue. Um, really nice, that nutty note that comes through on the palate, absolutely superb. And a longer finish, now that's still going on now. Um, it's longer than the first two. Genuinely a beautiful whiskey, and really nicely done. Um, that's it for the uh, for the master, uh, method of madness range uh, tasting for today. Um, apart from to say, came with a pair of method of madness socks, and I would have been wearing them today for the review, but figured you'd probably want to see them like this and not on my feet. Um, and as you probably can tell, they are. Uh, to the, uh, a sock version of the artwork used on the uh, single pot still Irish whiskey uh, release, the last one we just had a look at. Um, so pretty cool and massively unexpected. Um, thank you very much guys. Cheers.